G'day guys, and welcome to the first Fix-It Fingers Fiver. If you're not sure what that means, go back one episode and you'll get the introduction of the sort of content that I hope to achieve by showing you these lists of five things related to your woodworking workshop. Today in episode one, we're kicking off with hand tools. Basically, the five things that I feel you should go to first if you want to start off a woodworking type hobby. As we begin, we're going to try and look at the prices of things too, which are going to be available from your big box store and perhaps some slightly higher options if you do have a little bit more cash to throw around. Woodworking is basically a hobby of two parts. Making big wood smaller and reassembling that wood in a slightly more complicated way. That's what it boils down to. And to achieve those two things, the two tools which you could pretty much get away with are a handsaw. Now, as I mentioned previously, I am not a hand tool guy. I use power tools for the vast majority of my work. We'll talk about those next week. However, on the absolute most basic level, this tool or a variety of it is the thing which you are going to be able to achieve huge amounts of woodworking. In fact, I'm pretty sure you could use just a saw and build hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of projects. Now, I'm not going to go into the fine details of saws because quite frankly, I know diddly squat about them. But what I do know is that if I had my time again, I wouldn't get this saw. And I probably wouldn't get this saw. I want to get something in between. This is a very standard European style push saw and I got it for about two bucks from a $2 shop. However, it's now more than 10 years old and it still does what I need it to do. And at Bunnings or somewhere similar, you're gonna find a probably slightly better quality one than this, which will get you through your very first cuts. It's slow, it takes practice, it takes some skill to use properly, but you could hand cut dovetails, do all sorts of joinery with just a saw and some glue and build projects. My favorite saw at the moment is actually this little one, which was about $18 off Amazon. It's a Japanese pull flush cut saw, which means it's bendy. And I love it because it's super sharp, it's super accurate. And when I'm using a saw, I'm generally doing something small and fiddly that I can't safely do with one of my power tools. But what I really want is the in-between saw. Again, I like these Japanese pull saws. I just think the pull motion for me is a little bit easier. And you can get the double-sided ones, I'll have to throw up on the screen here what they're actually called, that have a fine and a rough side, and they're stiffer than this. So they're a bit more accurate for what you're doing in general cutting. And that's the one I'll probably go for first off, if your budget can stretch a little bit, a nice, reasonable quality handsaw will get you out of trouble. If not, then one of these cheapos from Bunnings is going to be great. All right, we've made stuff smaller. How do we put it back together again? Well, if you don't want to spend hours learning fancy joinery like me, then the simplest way is with one of these things. In fact, you probably don't even have to buy it because you probably have a hammer lying around just for belt and stuff that doesn't work in general because I mean, we all know that's the best way to fix things. Ironically, woodworkers don't tend to use hammer and nails terribly often, but again, you can. You can use nails to secure pieces together while the glue dries. we we'll have to get onto that glue a little bit later. You can use it to assemble a wide variety of different projects for your shop, for framing, for general carpentry sort of work. A hammer is not something you might use every day, but definitely one of the first things you need and cost two parts of nothing to add to your collection. You don't have to measure stuff in woodwork if you really don't want to, but the old cliche goes, measure twice, cut once, and your life will be easier. You're gonna notice an overall writing theme here. No tool is essential, but it will make your life easier and faster. A tape measure is pretty much as close to essential as you can get if you want to build accurately. I've got two different types here, the Craftrite, which is the budget bottom model, and the Stanley, which is a bit more expensive. These are both eight meter types, but honestly, you could probably get away with a five, just make them a bit smaller and lighter. The reason I like the Stanley over the Craft Right is the Craft Right covers all markets. It has metric on one side and imperial on the other. Now, I actually flip between the two measurement systems in my head thanks to a nerdy childhood of playing Warhammer. I do think in feet and inches sometimes. But here in Australia and most of the world, we're gonna be using the metric system. And I can't tell you how annoying it is when you go to measure something with a dual purpose tape measure like this and 
you want it in metric and the measurement's just on the wrong side, you're on the inch side and you can't read accurately. So the big advantage with this one is metric, easy to read on both sides. And that's the thing I'd look for regardless of brand in a tape measure. However, you're gonna find, particularly if like me, a lot of your projects are DIY related, you're gonna need these, screwdrivers. Again, something you probably don't even have to purchase because you probably have some lying around for general purpose use. Obviously, these are gonna come the most in handy when we start talking about our drill drivers next week, but they're indispensable. You're gonna to have to have a couple of screwdrivers around. If you don't have some, you're also probably not gonna buy two, the old flathead and the Phillips head. More than likely, you're gonna buy a set. They won't cost you very much. There are differences in the types of heads on there, even just the standard Phillips head. So a variety of screwdrivers like this won't set you back and is a great place to begin. Lastly, the least obvious one, but the one that I find perhaps really kicks you off in your woodworking career, and it's gonna make a big difference early on, is a square. There are lots of different types of squares. You've got the big carpenter squares, you have the engineering squares, which are like this, and you have combination squares. And this is the one that I recommend you go for. This will do 90 and 45, but honestly, I've only added this literally a couple of weeks ago, just for really quick 90 degree checking. You get so much more versatility out of a combo square, and if we're doing five things, we're actually cheating now. We can do six because they're gonna have a spirit level on there, so if you're trying to flatten up shelves or anything else for that matter, then the spirit level is going to be a very handy addition to the tool. There's also a little scribe. I don't know if many people know this. I can't get the damn thing out. You have to trust me, I'll show you a photo. If you unscrew there, you've got a little scribing pen, and mostly that is what separates it from your engineer's square. The tape measure allows you to set the depth of a blade, you can run a line along an edge of a board to mark out a cut. You can use it as a standard ruler that does come all the way out, nice like that. It's just so, so useful, so versatile. You won't have it out of your hand for very long on any project. It's got the 45 degree angle here. You'll just keep finding more and more uses for it. All right, guys, that's episode one. And as I said, we are tailoring straight to the beginner, the absolute novice woodworker, the place that I was just a bit under two years ago and sharing my advice along there. If you're a more experienced woodworker and you disagree with anything or you agree with something or you've got some hints and tips on these tools, put your five down in the comments below so that we can all learn and share together about this awesome hobby that is woodworking. That'll do for this week. I'll catch you soon on the next episode, Power Tools.